session. This time we're going to be coiling a bowl. Okay what you need for this build is some coils, a flat piece of clay, a circle cutter, a pot of slip, a knife, a rubber kidney and a rolling pin. Again it's a good idea to have the pillowcase or some piece of fabric on the table um, if you've got a table surface that isn't porous to stop everything from sticking. It's also quite useful to have a turntable with a piece of wood uh, untreated board on the top of it because um, it's nice to be able to turn your piece around as you're doing your coiling. Okay we're going to start out with a flat piece of clay just rolling out a little piece that will be the base. So the same as with the slab building, if you roll it in different directions it tends to give you a more even um, thickness as you go. Um, we don't want this too thin so I'm not going to roll too much more. It's kind of there um, and we're just going to chop a circle out. Now the size of the circle depends on the size of the base of your piece. Um, whether you're going to start with a big wide base um, uh, or a narrow base. Um, depending. Now I'm going to build a bowl, obviously you can coil anything. Um, the size of your base, if you want to go straight up, will obviously be the circumference of the whole piece. If you go out, it gets a bit wider. Um, if you go in, you need to start with a wide base so that you have enough room to go in all very obvious. Um, I'm going to put a foot ring on this bowl um, to start with. So the first thing I'm going to do is score all the way around the outside edge ready for the slip uh, and the coil to stick. When you apply the slip, put on enough to fill the lines you've just scored in. Now I've got a little coil. I'm hoping is enough. Now, depending on where you place the coil, if you put it in line with the outside edge, the foot ring will just go straight down. If you put it out a little bit, your foot ring will go out, go be wide at the base and in a little bit. If you put it in a bit, it will be narrow and come out slightly. So I am doing this straight up. Where you've got the edges of the coil to get two nice flat edges that will meet up nicely. You can just cut through both and take away the extra bits a little bit of slip on and then just put them together and blend. Because this is a foot ring I don't worry too much about this inside part of 
the coil blending it but the outside I just blend up You can tidy then with the side of a, a knife, just running it around to smooth. This can also change the shape if it's slightly lost shape for you. This is a good time to put your initials or your stamp in the bottom of your piece as well, just there, and then we turn it over. Okay, to start coiling the ball shape, we start in exactly the same way as with the foot ring, by scoring around the outside edge of the base where we're going to start building the coils up. I should say the way I coil is the way that I've found works uh, for me with my clay, the way I fire in my kilns, um, and it works particularly well for beginners. I find um, in that it gives me fewer uh, pieces with cracks and things that come out of the kiln um, with a problem. Um, but you don't need to do this, and there are a lot of people that have lots of different ways of coiling. This is just mine. Um, I hope it helps somebody, but if you do it different, if you get what you want out of the kiln at the end of it, it's right. Um, there's not really right and wrong ways of doing things uh, unless you're having pieces explode in the kiln or cracking. So I've put the scored and then I've put the slip down. So I'm going to take one of my coils, I'm going to pinch the end of it to make a little sloped piece and then I'm going to put it down like that on the edge of my pot. Now I'm going to make a bowl shape so I want this to go out a bit. So I'm going to take this coil a little way out so it overhangs the edge. If you wanted to go straight up you would place the coil so that it was in line with the edge like that and that would then every time you built you would build straight on top and that would give you a straight up shape. Um, if you wanted to go in, you would come in slightly and that would give you the kind of inward slope on a shape. Um, the bowl shape is outward, so I'm going to go to the outside edge. If you're going for a round piece, try and keep it round as you're building. And then when you get back to your first part of your coil, just pop some more slip on. just the four coils for this section. I'm going to finish where I started and because I'm aiming for a ball that's got a reasonably level top I'm going to try and keep the top level as I build up. So I'm going to just cut this top edge so that it follows the slope of the first coil that I put on there. to try and keep it all even. Okay, so now I'm going to use my knife. Um, some people use tools, um, some people use their fingers. I, I use this knife for most things. Um, I like the rounded end for doing this. 
um, and we're just going to blend the coils together to give us a nice smooth side. Now, I'm, because of the shape that I'm building, I'm going to blend from the top down um, on this side. Um, let's see if I can do it where you can see. Kind of awkward, but there we go. So you blend from the top. You can see I'm actually scraping clay off the surface um, to blend these down because we go we don't want the coil shape showing. Um, so I'm just going to scrape that down, take the clay from each coil to the one below to join everything up. Be especially uh, conscious um, when you're building anything like a vase, a mug, um, a bowl that might hold liquid that you need a good join um, on the bottom coil to the base. Um, that's quite often where you get your leaks. Um, point I'm not worrying about neatness I'm just blending things together and I'm also supporting behind with my hand whenever I do the blending. Now because I went down on the inside I'm going to blend up on the outside. By going in different directions you're helping um, to build strength into your piece. If you put your fingers on the top coil when you're going blending up to the top, it helps the coils not lift up as you as you blend. all blended we can use the rubber kidney to smooth. Now this clay is um, clay that I've used previously for the slab building video so it's not um, particularly wet it's dried off a little bit which makes it perfect for building um, with these coils because it's quite strong um, as I build out. If you're building quite steep angles you have to be aware that you only build a few coils at a time because you can imagine as it gets out it's putting a lot of pressure on and you might get something collapse so only build by one or two coils at a time if you're building out steeply and allow it to dry between ad coil additions um, if you if you start to feel it getting a bit weak <laughs> We start exactly the same way and do the same thing all over again. So we score around the edge of the coil where the next one is going to attach. We pop some slip around. Again, making sure there's enough to fill the lines you've just put in. Different people like their slip, different consistencies. I tend to work with mine about double cream consistency for the most part, um, especially for this kind of coiling. But again, whatever works best for you. So we've got the end of the coil where I cut um, the slope in last time, so I'm going to start with that coil this time. So we just pop that on and then carry on coiling round. 
You need to make sure your angle is what you're wanting for your bowl um, or whatever you're making. So keep double checking your shape because you can alter it um, and adjust as you go. More slip and carry on with the coils around. When you run out of coil, you can literally just pop a bit of slip on and add another coil onto the end. I'm taking this one out quite steeply at this point, so I'm going to stop at three coils for this section. And my coil was a little bit short for cutting, so I've just pinched the end to match where I started. And then we blend again. And again, you go down on one side, you go up on the other. until this point it's starting to get a little bit um, flexible as I'm working on it so I'm just gonna let it harden off and leave it for a little bit until I carry on building up but to continue building up we're just gonna do more of exactly the same thing and carry on scoring slip and then putting coils around blending together um, in sections of three or four um, coils at a time you can build with as many coils as you like um, at a time. I suggest four is a good place to start as a general rule for most shapes. Um, but if you're building straight up, actually, you can build as far as you can get in to do your blending um, uh, with your tools or your fingers. Um, and it's fine generally because it, all the weight is straight down. Um, if you're going out, it's less. If you're going in, it's kind of in between. Um, so for now, um, we're going to just wait and let it dry for a bit and get a bit stronger before I add some more to it. Okay, I'm now just going to keep going up until it's as high as I want it to be.
going to set it back in place and turn it over. going to need to dry some more um, before I can carry on. Hopefully, if we just leave it to dry, um, it will hold its shape a bit better. Have it like this I can do a bit of smoothing still um, but then it, again I'm gonna have to leave it for a bit of time carry on so I've wrapped it in plastic just to keep it um, so it doesn't dry out too much so I'm going to take the plastic off and hopefully this is now strong enough that I can just turn it over there we go and now I can work on the inside smoothing off. Um, I'm using a metal kidney um, to scrape and smooth and then um, a rubber kidney to do the final finish um, for this. So I will do exactly the same thing on the inside as I did on the outside and just smooth. Um, you can change the shape a bit at this point if you want. Um, if the form's not quite how you want it, um, you can do that um, with the kidneys. in rather than scraping back to you can always use the pieces that come off when you scrape pop a bit of slip where you want to add it in and then pop that clay in try to use the pieces that you um, scrape off because that clay is at the same uh, moisture level as the body of the piece um, which makes it easier um, to put the clay in um, without getting any kind of cracking or um, bad reactions between the two 
sections um, and then just use your rubber kidney to smooth over again. careful when you're using the kidneys that you don't um, make marks when you just put the kidney in. Um, I find the easiest way to avoid that is to have the kidney moving before you actually touch the clay so it's going in the direction that you want. Um, also always work with it like this, don't just put it in because that's when you'll get your mark is when it first touches the clay. So be very gentle with it and keep it moving. And you can, if you if that doesn't work for you, just use your fingers um, or your thumb, the pad of your thumb. Um, that's actually one of the best tools for smoothing out. It also means you can feel how smooth the surface is rather than just looking. Okay, there we go. So, um. I'm, although I quite like the thickness for the feel of the pot, um, I'd like to narrow that edge down a little bit and tidy things up. So I'm going to use the metal kidney again and hand on one side and gently scrape the rim until it's a bit thinner. So I'll just take some of the clay away around the rim to thin it down. This gives the illusion of the pot being finer as well, while still maintaining the, the integrity and the structure of the way it was built. Nice, long, smooth strokes with your rubber kidney, a little bit at a time, don't try and take off too much at a time. It's better to shave a little bit off each time and work your way around, even if you have to do it a few times around. that come off um, are perfect for your slip pots. So we just dust them out. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is tidy this top edge. As you see, it's a little bit um, on the wobbly side at the moment. We can do most of the tidying up at this point and it's literally just trimming off where it's raised. Now, I suggest you only do a little at a time with this, um, otherwise you'll end up trimming and trimming and trimming and trimming. It's not going to be perfect. Um, once it's dried off a little bit, there's a trick we can do um, that will level everything off for us. Um, so this is just about getting it as close as we can at this point. And like I say, a little tiny bit at a time. Might need to add in if you have some low patches like that. We can do the same as we did on the inside. Put a bit of slip in. Find a little piece that we've taken out and use the knife this time rather than the 
kidney and just run over the surface and then the edges. and we'll just keep working around. probably tidied quite a bit um, in that I would just finish off once it's dried a little bit more with tidying some of these edges um, but uh, and I do need to smooth the inside where the pieces have fallen in um, but if we want to do the trick we need to let it dry a little bit more um, yet but all it is is let it dry off almost completely. Um, I can't do it because my board's not quite big enough. My um, bowl doesn't fit entirely on the board. But if you have a nice large board, again, not treated, just put a bit of um, water on it, a bit damp, just a little bit um, of surface water. You turn your bowl over, make sure the area that you've damped down is bigger than your bowl. And then you gently rub your bowl. Make sure your bowl's um, solid enough to take doing this. Um, but with the water down, what happens is the um, clay on the edge is gently eroded away until it's all completely flat. And that will give you a nice flat top edge. Um, you can just see a little bit where it's started working with the dry clay. You need the water to make it nice and smooth and work properly. Um, but that little trick will give you a nice straight edge on the top of um, any pieces that you're making if you'd like. So that is the coiling video. Okay, so that is coiling a bowl. Um, obviously you can coil any shape you like. I've coiled um, faces and heads uh, quite a bit. Um, you can make any shape you like and it doesn't have to be round. Um, you just 
building using coils, um, but you can use short pieces of coils and um, build up and out and different angles um, that you want to make any kinds of shapes that you would like. Um, in this case, this was a, a straightforward bowl. So I hope you liked it. Um, I will be doing uh, some more videos shortly. Um, I think the next one is a wallflower video, uh, which is a very simple, quick exercise that's nice and easy to do at home uh, and can be done with um, other materials, not just clay, which is kind of helpful um, at the moment. So uh, I hope you like it. Enjoy and have fun. Thank you.